What is up, you guys? I am uh, here in San Diego. I thought I'd take a little time. I've got some questions. I've been collecting a bunch of your questions from comments in YouTube videos, from emails and stuff like that. So let's answer some of them here. <clears throat> okay, here's an interesting question from Nicholas. I'm taking a trip to Hawaii next year and I don't travel often, okay? So I have no idea what to bring. Could you do a here's what to pack when you're a traveling vid? Keep up the great work, man. No, Nicholas, you keep up the great work. Going off to Hawaii, that sounds like a bunch of fun. Also, I just am noticing how I look right now. I apologize. I literally, I just got done with a beach walk and I was just like, oh, I should film a video real quick. Which is probably gonna play a role in how I pack compared to you, Nicholas. Cause you're saying you're going to Hawaii in like a year from now. Like I figure out I'm going to Hawaii like three days. <laughs> three days from when I get there. Here's my trick for packing, but you're gonna have to wait because in Ocean Beach in San Diego, we get airplanes all day long. So we're gonna have a pause real quick. All right, here's my trick for packing stuff, okay? I think about activities. I think about the activities I'm gonna do. I just write a list. I'm going to Hawaii. I'm gonna surf. I'm gonna stand up paddleboard. I'm going to walk on the beach. I'm going to sleep in a hotel bed. I am going to uh, have dinners out in, you know, places where I probably pay too much money and it's all tourists, but it's still a blast because it's Hawaii or whatever it is. I'm going to go on a wild pig hunt. I don't know what you're doing in Hawaii. I just write down the activities. You guys, the activities, the actions of our life are really what our life is. When we need gear, we need gear for those actions. So if we can get our head clear around the actions that we need to take, it makes packing super easy. What do you need for paddle boarding and surfing? The same thing, just a pair of trunks. That's it. Also sunscreen. Just keep going, write the things. And now you've got a list of the things you want to, you need to bring. And if you, I find that that list typically is fairly more, it's more minimal for me than if I were to just pack stuff up. Oh, I might need this, or I might need that, or this, that, and the other. I just make that list, even if it's, even if I, the, I, I put some activities on there that I'm not going to do, I still pack pretty minimally. And this, Nicholas and everybody else out there who's thinking of traveling, or it, it has some travels coming up, this is the real trick to travel, is to not be loaded down with too much. And in fact, to, to, to experience a little bit of travel when you don't have the thing you kind of wish you had, and then you go like, eh, it'll be fine anyways. What's that feeling? Ah, it'll be fine. We'll just roll with it? Like, we'll just roll with it? Wait a minute. Is that what just happened in your life? So what used to happen before we had Netflix and the internet, you would just roll with what was on TV. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I guess we're watching chips. And that is an experience worth having. All right, let's get into the next question. Okay, this one's from Krishant. This is an interesting one. I needed some help trying to decide between a few bags and was wondering if you were planning to do any comparisons between the Wandered Provoke pack, the Prima, the Boundary Supply Prima system, and the Boundary Supply Errant. Are you comparing these three? Uh, there are so many great bags. He also mentions in your, or, or Krishant, I don't, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, uh, or a man or a woman, or anything else in between. In your recommendations, you mentioned the Tom Bin Synapse as your favorite bag, and the Provoke uh, is also one of your faves. So I'm yet more confused. Okay, those four bags, I think, are really interesting. The Provoke, the Wandered Perverky, or Provoke, the, uh, the Boundary Supply Prima, the Boundary Supply Errant, all right, and then the Tom Bin Synapse. All right, now, some of you are gonna be like, what's the Tom Ben Synapse doing in that in that list? And others you're gonna be like, of course the Tom Ben Synapse is on that list. The Tom Ben Synapse should be on that list, even though it's not Kickstartery, even though it's a little dad baggy, even though it's a little classic in that sense. But these four bags are very interesting. All right, I find myself recommending the Wandered Provoke to more and more people these days just because it kind of does a lot of jobs. It's got that tarpaulin rubbery outside, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's really durable. And especially in black, it looks pretty slick. It's got a very good, it's got a very, like a kind of a cool aesthetic, a very relevant aesthetic right now. And it's got a lot of capacity because it's a roll top and it's got a few outer pockets. I just got, I just uh, put my buddy into one of those recently. And I was surprised actually there isn't any like internal organization, um, like for pens and like a little organization, like admin panel or something like that. I don't typically mind that because I use like pen case and stuff like that so I just throw those in and then I can grab that little pen case and I've got everything that I need but there is enough organization on the Wander Provoke pack to where I'm like uh, I don't think you're gonna have any problems with it. the only problems you're gonna have is you're gonna get sort of bummed and I think you're gonna get sick of of the feel on the outside of the bag 
But if you're adventurous with that fucker, it'll put up with whatever you put it through and you'll be stoked in that regard. I'd say basically the same thing about the Prima, the Boundary Supply Prima, except for it doesn't have that rubbery outside. What my favorite thing about that bag is, is it feels like a bag. It's got double layers of very, um, very robust, water resistant, durable materials. And something about just the, the crunch of the fabric, scrunch of it, feels like a bag. It feels like a real product. I, I love that. They've got a whole system in the Boundary Supply Prima that is like, you know, you've got like a laptop thing with like all this tech pouchy type of stuff. So enough decent organization and then a subtle, a small roll top. I, I like the small roll top, but I, I if I'm going for a roll top, I tend to go for like a big roll top just because, man, when you need to fit a parka in there, you know, like an actual, like a huge stuff, part, like just stuffing it in, you can fit it. Or, you know, like a massive bear that I win from my sweetheart at the circus. You know, the ones like just the huge bear. It's like, oh crap, now what am I gonna do with this? You can kind of shove that into some bigger roll tops. Now, I do like the, the back of, of the Prima, the straps a little bit more, I think, than, than the Wandered, but I wouldn't choose between them just on that. I just wouldn't. I, I would look at, my, my whole thing with all of these videos, I, I, I'm answering lots of questions for people and email and stuff, and I'm constantly like, dude, listen, here's the deal. You're gonna need to watch both of those videos very intensely, maybe smoke a little weed before you do so, because it'll help you watch, like really look for it. Um, and you and you make the decision yourself. The difference between the Wandered Provoke and the Boundary Supply Prima, your gut's gonna tell you the difference before you purchase the bag, which one you should go with. The other thing you could do is buy them both, fiddle around with them, send one back. But then you're in kind of a tight spot because your wife's gonna see it and she's gonna want it you know, or your husband or your, your nephew or something like that. They're like, oh, and then you're gonna be like, well, I've already got it. I might as well not send it back. So, you know, you've been, a, you've been a good Santa Claus. Then there's the, then there's the errant. Okay. The boundary supply errant, which is actually kind of different from these other three to me, because it has a little bit of a tighter capacity. I definitely think it's a tighter capacity. You will not be able to fit the stuffed animal in the boundary supply errant. It is made for a tighter daily carry bag. That's my experience of it. That's what I would want to use it for. And I think it would be awesome at that. I didn't bring one down with me traveling and I keep contemplating reaching out to the company just like begging them to send me another one so I can include it in videos and uh, which is good for their business, right? But also so I can <laughs> use it from time to time because it's a really solid daily carry bag, okay? And then there's the Tom Bin Synapse, right? The fourth bag on the list well made. All of these bags are really well made. All these bags are going to last a while. You're going to get the money that you spend into these bags. You're going to get way more than that out of them. All of them. Every one of them. But they all carry a little different. Okay. And Tom Ben has probably in terms of on paper, it's my favorite aesthetic. It's using just real materials. It's made super well. It's made here in the U S it has, a, it has great, uh, like customer service and the, the company Tom Ben as a company is just amazing. They're like a great example of an American company to me. Right. So I, I'm kind of, I kind of got a little hard on, or I'm chubbing up just about Tom Ben, just the company. You know, just the, the way that that guy created that company and, the, and the, the impact that it's had, the kind of legacy that it has, the kind of ethos that it has, I dig it a lot. It's, 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 very, uh, it's very honorable what they've made. And that comes out, and the only reason why is because the products are very honorable. Like they will absolutely honor you. They will honor the things you have to do in your life. You have to get from point A to point B. You need your bag not to break. You need to organize stuff. You need to have access on the go. You need to be able to organize stuff inside and around the bag as you see fit, right? All of these bags are going to be able to do that. Each one of them represents a little bit of a different way of a, you know, a philosophy of carry. So, Krishant, I can't actually answer this question for you, right? You're going to need to make the decision because it's your life that you're using this bag for. And some people are going to resonate with this, that, or the other. And different in each of these different bags so that'll be up to you let us know what you get up to maybe put it in the comments of this video if you can Vishant. thanks for the question let's get to the next one all right here's a question from mary she says chase think your videos are great I love watching your videos however do you think you could include options for women occasionally i'm a petite female looking for a one bag travel bag i have a synapse 19 from tom ben and it's comfortable but it isn't big enough and frankly i find the pockets to be too fiddly love that I'm doing five weeks in Europe this summer and I want to ditch the nasty e-bags thing I've been using and upgrade. I also love that you live in my hometown. Thank you. Mary, 
Thank you, Mary. First of all, I just saw an e-bags bag. I was at an event recently, and I one of the people on the staff with me was uh, had an e-bags bag that was a travel bag, and I was like, oh, I'm going to find that. I got to go find that and review that sucker because it actually looked pretty. It looked pretty serious. It looked pretty good. I mean, it looked like an e-bags bag, which are just like these, like the aesthetic of just like it's like the kind of bag. <laughs> like it's just it's like the lowest common denominator aesthetic. You know what I mean? Not at all my favorite aesthetic, but that's me. Look at me, I'm like in a beanie with long hair and a funky beard that I should obviously have trimmed a long time ago. Living in San Diego with airplanes flying overhead, like co-living with a family. I gotta tell you that I'm co-living with another family. Like my family is living with another family. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not like <laughs> I'm not like a lot of other people. That's fine. I'm totally okay with that. A lot of people like those e-bags bags. So anyways, that, that got me thinking about it. But Mary wants to upgrade. She wants to upgrade and she's wondering for a female frame, what what should she be looking at? Okay, so the immediately the first thing that comes to mind is some of these bags from Tortuga. I'll put links below for all of these bags that I mentioned in this video. Um, so Tortuga has a few different bags and a few different sizes, right? So their set out bag, which if you're going for what she said, five weeks in Europe, five weeks. So five weeks is like, the way I travel is is I'll do laundry every two weeks ish. That's and I reuse clothes quite a bit, but I'm mixing and matching so the people that I'm with don't know that that shirt is the same thing I wore yesterday. It's just got a different sort of sweater on or something. So for five weeks, you don't need a massive bag like the Tortuga Set Out, which is their mat, which is the really big one. They have another one called the Set Out Divide, which will be tighter. You might you might find it to be too tight. I don't know. But the good thing about the Set Out Divide is. It's a great size that you can, like, like, first of all, it, it's, I think it's a great size for, the, for smaller frames. Got an awesome carry strap system, okay? So it's very comfortable. It's got plenty of space for, like, like the, in the main compartment. Not, it's not all, like, chunked up like other bags where you got to, like, mix and match and split stuff up. You can just shove it all in to that main compartment so you can fit stuff. It's smaller than the set out, right? So you could fit more on the set out, but it's way easier to travel with. And it actually works pretty decently as a uh, as a daily carry bag once you get there. It's not my favorite look, right? I, I would probably put one of my why not deploys in, in the bag because it doesn't take up any space when I lay it flat in there. And you have that as my small little daily carry bag. By the way, a lot more packable bags coming. Uh, some interesting stuff going on in packable bags. Uh, and some of these companies have reached out to me, so I've got a couple of those that I've been trying out and I'm gonna be filming soon. Another thing that comes to mind, now this is not a bag I personally like to travel with, and a lot of people have traveled with it and they, they, they like it, a lot of people travel with it and they hate it. It's like that Osprey um, Fair Point. Now the reason why I bring this up is they actually have a ladies size in it, so it's, it's better suited for smaller frames, um, and that, that can be useful. I, I don't love that bag in travel. I just don't love it in travel. I don't like getting access to my shit while I'm traveling. I don't like having it, you know, with the, the set out divide, you can almost fit under the seat in front of you if you're lucky on your trip out there. And so you have everything you need right there with you, right? But even if you put it up in the overhead compartment, it's still like because of the way the pockets are arranged and because of the way it's got organization in it, it's kind of, you can, you don't have to pull the whole bag out to get into stuff potentially. But then again, you got a smaller frame, so you can't really reach it. You're pulling it out anyways. But the Osprey Fairpoint is not my favorite in travel. It's great because it's not very uh, expensive as a bag. Uh, and it has smaller frame stuff. So if that if that's the number one item for you, then that might be a great pick. But I mean, like like the Peak Designs travel bag. Okay, that's an awesome travel bag for multiple multiple different shapes and and frames. Okay, maybe for you it it is uncomfortable. I doubt it'll be uncomfortable. I I suspect it might look funky. Maybe maybe if a bag of any big bag is going to look big on a small frame. And so you're navigating that. I I know that feeling. I don't like to wear a bag that looks too big or too small, right? It's that kind of like you're trying to get into that little sweet spot, you know? But then you also need the bag to do shit for you like carry your stuff and like have enough stuff. So, you know, I mean, the the Peak Designs travel bag was one of the biggest biggest announcements of 2018 in in myspace not my not myspace the social networking site where everybody was tom's friend but in my like i'm looking at the bag space the one of the biggest announcements uh, like of of my life at this point is this uh this peak design travel bag because it, it is so functional 
It has got so many innovations in its materials. It's also got the eco uh, sustainability sort of ethos built into it. It's really sleek in travel. It carries all your stuff. Everything's protected inside. There's all these different ways you could set it up with your camera and your packing cubes and stuff if you're like that. It's got expandability. It's got ac external access and lots of organization on the inside. I mean, it just does everything. So I don't think that that bag breaks a smaller frame, meaning it doesn't look terrible on a smaller frame. It, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't carry very uncomfortably on a smaller frame because the hip packs, by the way, the hip straps kind of go away. So to me, I would be surprised if you didn't find this to be the the, the Peak Designs travel. I'm pointing here because it's got all my camera gear. I use it as my camera rig. I would be surprised, Mary, if you if you didn't find that to to actually be you know when all said and done, like if you went and did this trip with one bag and then you went and did the same trick with a trip with another bag. You, I end up finding that like all these bags they end up kind of treating me the same. If it's good, it carries well, you've got to learn how that bag carries and carry that way. If you try to carry the Tombin uh, Synapse the way that the Peak Travel Bag carries, you're missing out on all the good things that Tom Bin has. Every bag has its own little uh, personality. That's why I like about good bags. Now I'm just rambling but you're gonna listen to this. I think I'm gonna say it. Like every bag has its own personality because that's the designer's intention. You see what we're, what we're experiencing when we experience a bag or any artifact, anything that's well designed. A house is the best example of this. Not just a house, how about a religious space? Any place where an architect has stepped in and compared the, the, the size of a human body to, uh, to the, the space that we have to make this thing and overlaid that with the cost of materials and construction and has all these like limitations or constraints in terms of uh, what they can do and now they have to make a decision and make something that's remarkable. This is design. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? This is, to me, design isn't like making the Apple stylus look like it's an Apple, or the Apple pencil look like it's not just a stylus, like it's actually an Apple pencil. You know, like, like that's design. We built it out of a single piece of aluminium. Design isn't just fucking, uh, you know, wrapping. With bags, you experience this profoundly. How your bag carries is a function of the design thought that went into crafting that bag. Everything down to the materials and zippers and zipper poles, all of those little things which your fingers are interacting with, handles, which I often talk about, but then external access. How many pockets do they have on the outside of the bag or is organization on the inside of the bag? So I'm opening up the main compartment and then my stuff's organized. How many pockets, how much organization does this designer think people need to have? Because no bag is perfect for everybody. You can find the bag that might be perfect for you. I, by the way, I, should, I shouldn't say perfect. There's no perfect bag. That's why I, I'm making such a big point of you finding out what your bag is like, <laughs> who, like who this bag is, because who the bag is is really, a, like I, I, like these designers put a lot of thought into it, put a ton of thought into this. And I, I mean, the Peak Design travel bag, you really experience that because the way the materials feel. The, the Boundary Supply Errant, you really experience that because it's so interesting. It's like a bag from the future. This is the one I'm currently using right now. It's the Bellroy Shift, but it's the MAP version. MAP, M-A-A-P, I don't know, they do something with bikes. So this is like upgraded for, for bikey stuff. What I love about this bag is it's just got a great style, but there's almost no external access on this bag. There's one little pocket over here, which I completely forgot about. There's a access over here to the inside of the main compartment, but most of it comes through here. So my whole philosophy of carry in here has been what pouches and which where do I put those pouches because it's nice to be able to get stuff from here, but I don't need that very often, but I can reach in and just grab it versus opening up the top of the bag, getting in where I have my like headphones are right there. My smoke sack is right there. Like the things that I need occasionally right there and I can get my laptop as well. And by the way, there's pockets inside at that top. When I open this up, when I open this up, there's pockets inside video to come on this bag soon. Um, and I know that I'm not gonna be able to, to I only need to get my, charger for my laptop when I'm getting my laptop. So I don't put my charger over here because then I have to open this up, get my laptop and then put my charger and then open this up and get my charger. There's a little pocket right in there that's perfect for my charger. So whenever I'm opening it up to get my computer, I have my charger right there for me. So it's not just looking at the design ethos or the, the, the personality of the bag. It's also looking at you. And this is where the real juice starts to flow because <laughs> Because how many of us just don't look very closely at our own lives? I'm just saying, I mean, just as a thought, you know? What if, there's, what if there's ways you could carry with your bag right now that are more aligned with what you need and your bag's sitting there ready and willing to carry that way? 
but you haven't realized you need it to work that way. I think this is partly why, uh, you know, everybody who, anybody who watches that bag video that I did with uh, Will, who customized, like hot rodded his, his own bag. And I was like, you gotta show me this. I met him in a coffee shop and I was like, you gotta come into my studio and, and show us this. And people were like inspired and it was very interesting because Will was like, here's how, here's what I need. You can picture Will just setting out all of his crap and saying, and organizing it and saying, here's what I need when, and, and in my wildest dreams, here's how I wish my bag would carry this stuff, right? By the way, I'm still answering Mary's question about a bag for smaller frames, <laughs> apparently. But what I was getting at is that, Mary, if you took a, a, a bag that was made for a smaller frame, um, if you took that Osprey Ladies Fairpoint, if you took the the set out Divide, which is, which is a great bag, and and then you took the Peak Design Travel Bag and you did the same trip with all three of them. That's, you really learn like all the, like what's different and what's good about each of those bags. I think all of them would feel the same on your frame for lack of a better, I mean, they, they would just like, any bag feels a little uncomfortable when it's packed out with shit and you gotta get it from A to B. You're going from, you know, the air, airport in Berlin to some train station that's going to take you to the center of town and then you got to walk for a while to meet up with a walking tour and like oh my god I didn't have time to go to my hostel or a hotel before so I'm going on this walking tour with my bag but it's like it's okay because I got hip straps you know I had the most profound walking tour of Berlin one time this like people who lead walking tours are almost to a T magical people they're just like, they're just weirdos who want to travel and they found a way to make it work by telling the story of some town while you walk through it and it ends at like a pub. It's like, come on, are there, is there a better job than that? I guess it would be making YouTube videos. I, I think actually, I think I win that one. So Mary, hopefully that, that's helpful. I'll put links to those below. Let's quit the question and answer there. Otherwise this will go for forever. Uh, I'll be continuing to do some of these because I have a lot more questions to answer. Uh, and so don't feel, be afraid to, you know, write your question in a comment below or fill out the info at bagworks.co. Uh, housekeeping items. I'm currently in San Diego where we just signed a lease for 12 months. So we're going to be in Ocean Beach in San Diego for 12 months. You might see me haunting the, uh, the shores of Ocean Beach from Leo Carrillo to Sunset Cove. Uh, and <laughs> I can't remember what Walter says there, but, uh, listening to my, you know, podcast, one podcast I'm listening to right now, future thinkers podcast, specifically the episodes with Vinay Gupta, Vinay Gupta. All right. I'll put a link to those below. I'm pumped to be in San Diego. It feels really good. My wife and I, and our two kids are co-living with, we're doing intentional community with another family, my buddy, Jared, his wife, Ilea, and their three kids okay so we're we just took now my my oldest who's nine my youngest who's uh or my oldest who's nine my youngest who's two now they have <laughs> three brothers and sisters kind of in our house we're sort of fucking with uh you know birth order psychology but we're exploring sort of what it looks like to live you know live with like you know that i've ever heard, like rented a house with friends for a weekend you know that like excited thing where you're like unloading all the costco shit and you're like right the kids are outside already in some big field or, or like that feeling of like moving moving into the, into the kitchen and making the meals and stuff for all of us, it's all together. That's kind of what I wanted to keep going. And, and it's, we've been doing it for about a month and a half and I'm like, this is cool. Another thing that's coming up is I'm gonna be doing a group coaching thing. Now I haven't mixed my worlds very much. A lot of you might not know that I have been an entrepreneur trainer for the last six years or so. I started up a company called Fizzle, became very successful uh, with my partner Corbett Barr, and we, uh, we and, and lots of people, lots of team members throughout, which has been amazing. I still run a podcast called The Fizzle Show, which is which is to me the, the number one place to go for honest business conversations if you wanna actually start a business. And I, I kinda wanna pull both these worlds together because I know a lot of you out here are thinking about building stuff, or a lot of you who watch this already have built something, and that's specifically who I wanna talk to. Um, I'm going to be doing a group sort of uh, training, which will all be online. It's mostly just going to be, we're going to be hanging out. I'm going to be hearing about what you're working on in life. We're going to be group thinking it together uh, to, to, to help you figure out, like, what are you really going to be working on right now? Like, what's important for you to finish? One of the hardest things in working for yourself is knowing what to work on and then actually doing that. 
do and I want it to be like a six week thing. So we're not just figuring out we're gonna work on and then I'm letting, letting you hang out and dry. Like we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna help you like week after week. Like, hey, did you do it? We're gonna, we're gonna follow it through. We're gonna walk it out. And we're actually gonna make an impact in our lives. We're gonna put a fucking dent in this thing, you know? And this, literally, this is how I'm doing this. If you wanna be involved in this, send me an email. Chase Reeves at gmail.com, okay? That's pretty straightforward. Send me an email, we'll be in touch. And as always, if you're not on the email list at bagworks.co, I cannot help you. I cannot announce to you when I have like some special project coming out or some company gets in touch and like, listen, we wanna do a, a flash sale. Everybody who uses this link on your channel only gets 20% off, right? I can't help you if you're not on the email list at bagworks.co. So go to bagworks.co, find the little email box and sign up. There's never spam. It's me you're dealing with here. Was that creepy? Was that I felt like as I, as I said that I was like I was like wow that sounds sort of that sounds a little bit creepy. <laughs> I guess you'll have to decide. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Be well. Bye bye. Bagworks.co. Jaceries.net. Those are the websites. I guess those are the websites. Yeah, where I guess want so. us to. Hmm. Let's go check out what he's up to or something like that. Yeah, it looks nice.